What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Psylocke from Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've got the colors I've used on this model up on the screen now. So if you want to pause the video, copy those down, we can dive right on in. So this model was sent to me by the client. He's fully assembled it, and I don't think that's any different from what I would have done. Although I personally would have kept the actual entire base element separate, painted the base first, and then glued Psylocke along with the Sentinel Ruin afterwards, largely just to get a little bit of an easier access to base details like the any sewer grates, if you have one on the base or if you want to paint uh, road markings, etc. I'll have a link in the description below for a full length tutorial on how I actually paint this style of bases. So if you want to check that out, um, the link will be below. Otherwise, the only thing I've really done on this model is I've primed it with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. And prior to doing the dry brushing on the base, I gave the entire model a base coat of dark sea blue with the airbrush. I'll be following the box art for this. So a combination of the blue suit, the blue armor on the Sentinel, along with all of the purple elements on her belt, as well as the blade. Just doing the airbrush step for the base coats is just a lot faster and easier than doing it by hand. One thing I do want to note, I'll be using a very similar recipe of blue for the sentinel leg, as well as for the suit. So the technique for painting the armor is going to be pretty much as I did for my regular sentinels. I'll have a link below as well. So that'll break down a little bit more in depth on how I would approach painting a full non-metal metal element. So things like the armor on the legs, etc. So that video will go a little bit more in depth on the approach to doing the, the Sentinel element. And then of course I have the full length video on my Patreon as well. So I'll cover the recipe on this model, but I'm not gonna do a whole deep dive into that specific technique. Again, that video for the Sentinel will be in the description below. I'm gonna to start to highlight the blue with some light Prussian blue. And because I'm gonna be using the same recipe on both the suit as well as the Sentinel leg, I wanna make sure that, especially as I'm laying down these mid-tones, that I start to consider the, the differentiation between the values of the figure as well as the leg. I'm gonna go fairly heavy-handed in these early highlighting phases to make sure that the blue of the suit does end up being brighter, especially in the midtones, compared to the actual leg of the Sentinel. Now to actually paint the Sentinel leg itself, I'll cover the recipe briefly as I mentioned in this video, but if you wanna see that deeper dive, I will have a link to the Sentinel tutorial video in the video description below. From light Prussian blue, I'll start to mix in Ducat blue for my highlights. And I'm starting with the Sentinel leg first, what I want to do is establish the brightest value on the leg of the suit before going back in on the actual figure. And this will help give me a, a baseline for how much brighter the suit needs to be in order to have that value separation from the figure and the base. I think on the actual leg itself, I do end up going to about a, a 70-30 Ducat blue, light Prussian blue highlight. And so I want to make sure that I'm taking the suit up into Ducat blue fairly heavily in the midtones, and then especially with the highlighting going even further to make sure that there is that punch. From the top blue, I'll start to highlight into pastel blue, and I'll use this mix exclusively on the suit of Psylocke. I wanted to have a bit of that shiny leather feel, and so the way I'm approaching the highlighting at this stage now is almost akin to like a suit of shiny leather, where I'm getting some stronger bands of highlighting, a bit more of a jump in contrast between my mid-tones and my highlight tones. With the highlight done, I'll go back in with some glazes of light Prussian blue. For this, I'll be using the airbrush, but you can definitely use the um, brush and to hand glaze it in as well. It is more or less just a trade-off. I find with the airbrush, I can go a little bit faster. I get a more consistent finish over a larger area. At the cost of a bit of control, where if you go back in by hand, you have that accuracy, but it requires a bit more brush technique to get those smoother transitions. I was finding that the leg itself wasn't as dark as I wanted it compared to the suit. So I go back in with some dark sea blue and I do the same thing, glazing in those mid and shadow tones of the leg to darken that portion of it. 
To paint the fuchsia, I'm going to start with some Blood Fest Crimson. This color is very, very translucent out of the pot, and you'll want to make sure that you apply a couple of coats to get a nice, even finish. From there, I'll start mixing in progressive amounts of fuchsia, and the goal here is to work all the way up to pure fuchsia. The mix of the crimson into the fuchsia does make the paint a little bit more transparent than normal, and so you'll want to make sure you're doing a couple of passes to get a nice, smooth, even finish. From there, I'll start mixing in some pale yellow to create my highlights. And this is much like with the blue on the suit, primarily focused on the actual Psylocke figure itself. So we're looking at the sash of the belt. We're looking at the handle and the bindings of her katana. And then it's not shown on camera as well, but I did forget that her hair was also the same color of this purple fuchsia. So I used the same recipe on the hair afterwards as well. And then to finish it all off, I go back in with a few glazes of Game Colors Evil Red. I dilute this to about a watercolor consistency, and I'll do a few passes or a few coats, especially on the sash and the bindings and the hair to get a nice rich finish in the shadows. To paint the gold, I'm using a progressive mix of Burnt Umber, English Uniform, Japanese Uniform World War II, and Pale Yellow. Now because the gold is limited primarily to the hilt of the sword, I'm not doing any crazy blendings. I do a bit of uh, a wet blending, but not really. It's more just like layering up the colors. The goal or the, the aim here is to capture that really reflective metal surface by having that contrast of my brightest highlights beside my deepest shadows. I find when painting reflective materials or reflective metals, that's really the key to help sell the material and the effect is to have that contrast of your bright brights and your dark darks side by side. So when we're painting the non-metal metal silver, it's the exact same approach. We're progressively going from rubber black to ash gray into graphite, medium sea gray, pale gray, and then white sands. Now, you don't need to use all these colors. You can actually cut a few of them out and mix your way through. It does take a little bit more work and a little bit more of that mixing, but because I do prefer being able to move quickly and consistently with the same recipe in a collection, I tend to use more colors to help speed up that process. I do a bit more of a deeper dive in painting these types of metallics in the Sentinel tutorial, so definitely check the link below. But basically the aim here is to layer up through your highlights. Working through each color in progression, once you've hit that midtone, do an edge highlight over all of the edges before continuing further up into your brightest points. And as you layer up, you're leaving more and more of your previous layers showing. And this way you're able to um, build up those highlights and create a bit of a, a pseudo blend through your layering technique. Once you've hit your brightest highlight, it's then a matter of going back in with your mid and shadow tones in this case. I use a combination of ash gray and rubber black, and I just do glazes to help smooth out some of those transitions and create a bit of a softer fade between the layers. Using pure black, I'll go back in and then black line each of the different crevices or gaps in between the ribbing before going back in with some pure glazes of black to attack those deep, deep shadows. To paint the cabling, I'll use some ash gray and then basically to freehand a bunch of dots to help simulate a mesh or webbed effect across the surface. Basically, paint a dot of lines in a diagonal pattern across, and then you just repeat up and down to create that crisscrossing pattern. And then you go back in with a brighter highlight color, so in this case I'm using graphite, to apply the highlights. If you keep your paint nice and diluted, you can apply your dots in a very thin manner, um, build up progressive dots in certain spots to get it brighter or darker, and then go back in with some glazes to help deepen that shadows again. For that, I'm just using black. Very soft, very watercolor consistency, so that they're not sudden. It's not like a, an opaque layer, but you can build up those transitions and create a bit of a blend. To paint the skin, I'm going to start with a base coat of Indian Shadow, and I'm going to apply this over all of the legs, arms, and the face. When it comes to the face, make sure that you're getting this color all the way up to that hairline and then not overpainting onto any area of the blue suit. From there, I'll highlight into pure base flesh, 
for the next few highlights. So for this layer up into base, pure base flesh, and then the next color up into beige red, I'm not focusing on smoothing out my blends initially. The goal is to block in my highlights, make sure that I'm really accentuating the, the form of the figure. And I'm applying my highlights in a consistent way that matches what I've already done on the figure. The goal here is to work the way up to pure beige red. And you can see it does take a few coats to get that nice smooth finish. From beige red, I'll do the same thing into light flush. And because light flush has a hint of white in it, you're going to find that the color doesn't cover as well as some of your mid and dark flesh tones. So you can see here that a first few passes, you see a lot of the brush strokes, the layers aren't super smooth. You'll want to make sure that you're diluting your paint and doing a few of those passes to get that smooth finish. And then once you've got that highlighting up, you go back in with some of your mid and your shadow tones. I'm mixing in various amounts of the base flesh and beige red, and I'm applying it to smooth the transitions out. Basically finding that midpoint of those two colors and applying a layer to smooth that transition and just repeating it over and over again until I've smoothed out the, uh, the blends to a satisfactory level. I'm gonna add a bit of extra rosiness into the deepest shadows of the figure with some violet red glazes. Again, watercolor consistency, and I'm focusing this on like the backs of the legs, under the armpits, and especially on the cheeks and the temples and side of the nose. To paint the eyes, I'm gonna start with some tenuous gray to fill in the eye sockets. The technique I'm using for this is basically black dot, white dot, black dot. So using tenebrous gray, I'll black dot the eyes with some white sands. I'll white dot the eyes to paint the whites of the eyes before going back in with some tenebrous gray again to paint the pupils, which is the final black dot. Now, with the black dot, I did end up darkening some of the whites of the eyes. So I do go back in with some white sands just to correct and brighten up those whites. To paint the energy blade, I'm going to start with that blood fest crimson as well. Again, making sure to do a couple of passes to get a nice even finish. And then using some magenta and intense pink, I'll apply my next few highlights. So I'll drop a link below where I actually painted the Marvel Crisis Protocol widgets in much the same way. And it's pretty much the same technique or the same approach. The goal is to build an undertone blend or a gradient of color from a dark to a midtone. The goal working up to a pure white pattern before going back in with some glazes either by hand or with the airbrush to smooth those transitions out and create that sort of faded pattern. It's a little bit trickier on this blade because of the size and the texture, but I think the approach is the same. So you can see here that I'm going from the crimson into the magenta, into the pink, into the white. As I work my way up, I'm concentrating it more and more on the base of the blade and freehanding in that sort of Kirby dot zigzagging energy pattern. I wanna make sure that I'm leaving some of my previous layers showing through, especially that magenta and that pink tone. Once I've got that pattern painted in, I'll go in with some glazes of fluorescent magenta. I recommend using the airbrush for this. You really do want to have that nice, smooth, even coverage and being able to build up those layers progressively with the airbrush is a lot easier to do than by hand. Once I've done that pass, I'll go in with Drucci Violet and I'll do a few glazes over all of the mid and shadow tones of the figure just to add a little bit of extra punch. And I'm doing this now before I go back in and touch up the blade because any overspray on any of the pink or magenta elements, I can then correct back with white afterwards. If you do the white first, and then correct with this violet, you'll end up overspraying with the violet and having to correct the white anyways. And then finally, using pure white and tenebrous gray, I'm gonna add that final pass of sharp highlights on the blade. So starting with the white, I'm gonna concentrate this and the, the base and the hand. Using a bit of a stippling technique, I'm basically building up those layers, getting that nice, so sort of almost Kirby dot cartoon pattern. The goal is to have pure white at the base of the hand and then fade it out as it goes towards, I guess, the, um, the rays extending out from the hand as well as the tip of the blade. 
and I'll go in with tenebrous gray to actually black line the edge as well to further increase that cartoony effect. Unlike the box art, I don't take the white all the way down to the tip of the blade. I think that looks a little bit too cartoony and I really love the tone of that fluorescent magenta. So having that fade, especially on the entire length of the blade was a lot more, I think, aesthetically pleasing to me. And that will complete the Psylocke figure. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and make sure that you check out those other tutorials I was mentioning in the description below. There's one for the base, as well as one for the Sentinel leg, which includes that non-metal metal deep dive. And if you want to check my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.